The Dornier DO-31 is the world's most famous vertical jet transport prototype. The adventure began in 1962. Dornier was commissioned to develop an aircraft for transporting troops in combat zones. The project was commissioned by the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force. At this point in history, vertical jets represented the future of combat aviation. But what is a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, more commonly known as a VTOL? These aircraft are synonymous with extraordinary engineering. Various techniques are used to bring this project to fruition. The experience of the Dornier DO-31 has thus left its mark on the history of the aviation industry. Very quickly, it was recognized as the aircraft of all records. However, it was also seen as far too ambitious a prototype. In the end, the project came to nothing. The difficulties of takeoff and landing and the various problems are far too numerous. So what does the future hold for this type of aircraft? What does the Dornier DO-31 represent in the aviation world? Vertical jets are, in a way, the future of combat aviation. But before we go any further, it's important to define what a VTOL really is. A vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is an aircraft that doesn't need a runway to take off or land. These aircraft are equipped with various systems that combine the vertical ascent of a helicopter with the cruising speed and load of an airplane. They were conceived in 1921 by the American engineer Nikola Tesla. In the 1950s, it was the military who took over the introduction of VTOLs. They feared being grounded if the runways were bombed. With a VTOL, the risk is reduced as they use a smaller platform, just like helicopters. As early as the end of the 19th century, a large number of engineers were proposing extremely heavy machines that could take off and land vertically. However, very few of these were considered VTOLs and none ever made it beyond the prototype stage. It was the Germans who initiated the first research in this field during the Second World War. At the time, it was vital to avoid vulnerability to enemy bombardment. Even so, this extraordinary engineering seemed very difficult to master. It was only after the war that Germany, Russia, and the United States really realized the usefulness of such ingenious aircraft. The race for vertical takeoff and landing aircraft was on. At the start of the Cold War, the number of projects continued to multiply. It wasn't until the 1960s that the first vertical takeoff and landing fighter was mass-produced. It was the British Harrier. This just goes to show how ambitious a project of this type can be. Numerous techniques are used to enable the aircraft to take off and land vertically. A number of avenues have been explored to eventually eliminate the distance covered horizontally. Let's take a look at some of the techniques that have been considered. First, the aircraft can take off vertically, like a rocket. It tilts horizontally during flight, then tilts back to the vertical as it approaches landing. With another technique, the aircraft remains horizontal throughout all phases of flight. Only the engines switch from vertical to horizontal during flight, or when the aircraft needs to take off and land. Finally, the aircraft can use a combination of rotors for lift and propellers for propulsion. The engines drive one or the other by means of a progressive cogging system. Cogging refers to the coupling of two parts, by engaging the projections of one part and the corresponding recesses in the other. Of course, there are many other techniques involved, but we can't cover them all in this video. On ATEC, it was the Dornier DO-31 that caught our eye. This prototype reflects an incredible experience in the aviation industry. The year is 1962. The German federal government asked the Dornier aircraft manufacturer to work on an unusual prototype. It was a VTOL. At the time, this type of transport was very popular, particularly with NATO forces. The program was finalized in April 1964. Germany was planning a medium-sized aircraft with a transport load equivalent to that of the French Noratlas. The latter then equipped the Luftwaffe. However, such an invention gave the engineers assigned to the project a hard time. Indeed, the classic propulsion corresponding to the horizontal mode had to be achieved by two jet engines with a thrust of 4 tons each. Vertical lift, on the other hand, is provided by 10 small jet engines, each delivering 1200 kg forces of thrust. These must be installed in nasals connected to the wing. The Dornier DO-31 was born. This machine soon proved to be far too expensive. What's more, the nasals would greatly impair the aircraft's aerodynamic qualities. The program therefore became the DO-31E. The engine nasals are relocated. The first prototype saw the light of day in November 1965 and was given the name DO-31E1. After numerous postponements, it made its maiden flight on February 10, 1967. 
On November 20th of the same year, it made its first vertical ascent. A few weeks later, it made its first translation. The transition from vertical to horizontal flight was flawless. The DO 31E1 was soon setting world records in its class. These include cruising speed, ceiling, range, and takeoff weight. It is therefore particularly impressive. Of course, many armies are unanimous in their support. However, its shortcomings are far too numerous. In spite of this, Dornier received a study offer from the state owned airline Lufthansa. The aim was to offer an airline version of the Dornier DO 31E. Unfortunately, the program was also cancelled, even before the first prototype had been built. The idea was for a 100 seat aircraft capable of flying 3,000 kilometers at an average speed of 800 kilometers an hour and taking off vertically from building rooftops. NATO is also interested in the DO 31 for maritime reconnaissance and tactical transport missions. Similarly, the study of this variant did not last long. In reality, all these operations were far too ambitious. Set to represent the future of combat aviation, the Dornier DO-31 ended up going down a blind alley. Generally speaking, the development of VTOL aircraft is much more complicated than that of conventional aircraft. They are much harder to control on takeoff and landing. This is one of the reasons why these aircraft have always struggled to find their place in civil aviation. The Dornier DO-31 is a case in point. In addition, there are a number of other problems that prevented this aircraft from making it beyond the prototype stage. Excessive fuel consumption on takeoff and landing is one of the main problems. On the other hand, both the combat load and the range are incredibly limited. Nor does its range break any real record. All these reasons are responsible for the fact that the Dornier DO-31 is not very attractive to the military. Today, a future for VTOLs and the Dornier DO-31 doesn't even seem to be on the horizon. Nevertheless, a new era is dawning for these extraordinary aircraft. They could revolutionize urban air mobility. Whatever the case, the subject is beginning to find its way into people's minds. From now on, it's electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, more commonly known as eVTOLs. These are life-size flying cars. These vehicles seem to represent the future of VTOLs. In a way, they are the successors to the Dornier DO-31. They can transport several people as well as goods. They could even become the cabs and they could even become the cabs and delivery vehicles of tomorrow. This new form of mobility is part of the drive to free up urban space which is in danger of becoming overcrowded in the years ahead. By 2050, these populations are set to double. By 2035, these flying vehicles should number 40,000 if the mission to relieve urban traffic congestion is to succeed. This unstoppable technological invention is likely to change many things in our daily lives. Are we really ready for the Dornier DO-31 to rise from the ashes? At the start of the project, vertical jets represented the future of combat aviation. These aircraft are the epitome of outstanding engineering. Various techniques were used. It was the prototype Dornier DO-31 that made aviation history. It was soon seen as the aircraft of all record. But later, the project was seen as far too ambitious. It went nowhere. In fact, the Dornier DO-31 had far too many problems to solve. Yet, the future of these aircraft may well surprise us in the years to come, particularly with the introduction of EV tolls. Could vertical jets really be the answer to some of today's problems?